Hi, I'm Jane Marks and this is From the Heart. And as you can see, we're still here filming at my home. We haven't gotten the all clear yet. And so for the next few weeks, we'll still be filming from this address. So we're so happy you joined us today. And today is an especially terrific day because we're going to be introducing you to the world of arts and culture. And to bring this very exciting message to us, I'm so thrilled to have with us Dr. Audra Price Pittman, who is the Vice President of the Savannah School Arts and Design. And she is located in Atlanta, Georgia. And so we're so excited to have her join us today. Let me just tell you a little bit about Audra. She's a pretty special person. She's not only an artist and an educator, she is an athlete, she's a fashionista, she's a mom, she's a wife, she is an influencer, and she is one person that we know our audience is going to be really eager to see and enjoy what she has to share with us today. And so we're going to be talking about arts, and I'm so glad you joined us, Audra, and you know, you have had such a long history and experience and love of arts. You've got to tell us how that came to be. You know, it's crazy. I was just thinking about that on the way over here. I've just, I've loved the arts all the time. And my parents really supported and nurtured it. My mom and dad were both musicians. A lot of people don't know that. They, know that. My mom studied piano. My dad played saxophone in high school. So they've always, you know, taken us to plays, encouraged art classes. So it just kind of felt natural. It's just what I liked. You know, people like business, people like whatever it is. I just, I've always loved the arts. So you've always loved art, but you have turned your love of art into an extensive and very powerful career. I mean, and just the love of arts has brought you to where you are today. How did it get started? You know, I think it probably even goes back to grade school, right? When you become the artist of the class or all of a sudden your arts entered in a competition. I think I remember in middle school in art in eighth grade, I was living in New York and one of my pieces went to um, I believe it's like the superintendent of all schools of New York. And I'm like, wow. wait, this is like a real thing, <laughs> you know? And um, I just remember, you know, I always loved it in high school and people said, you know, you can study illustration and art in college. And I said, okay, I guess I'll just do it because I like it. I never really thought about a career and it all just kind of fell into place just because I followed what I love doing. Did your family encourage you to love the arts or did they steer you like so many families, like in my husband's case, they always steer them towards education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and they sing, well, you know, Arts, maybe, I, we love the fact that you're so talented, but you know, you might want to consider education. How did your family nurture that in you? You know, it's interesting. So I come from a family of educators. My mom works for University of Connecticut, but I always grew up going to her schools, wherever she was working during the summer, helping her with her teacher planning boards. My aunts in Atlanta, I would always go to their class and help out. So it was just kind of part of, you know, what we're doing, but college was never an option. It was like, you're going to college. I said, okay, <laughs> all right, you know? And I think even in college, I didn't realize that, wow, I could be an art teacher. I get to make my art, I get to order supplies, I get to be around kids and new, you know, exciting ideas. And so it just really all fell into place. Now, for teenagers out there, was art your major in college? Yes, I graduated about 20 years ago. Um, she doesn't and, look at that, she audience. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I studied illustration. I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in illustration. I always thought I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. I collected children's books. I just loved the idea of it. I had a very influential professor who always would publish like in New York Times, the New Yorker magazine. Wow. She would take us on field trips to New York, see the Society of Illustrators. And that was just illustration. I wasn't even really privy to all the things that are available even today. You know, we, of course, in my practice, I see so many teenagers, and I see some teenagers who dabble in art. But if you were talking to teenagers, like some of these teenagers that come through, some think they're just tremendous artists, some, on the other hand, maybe not so talented. But how do you start to cultivate that early on? I just think, you know, it's just like any discipline or any field. Just surround yourself, get internships, go into an office, mentor an artist, go into a graphic design firm, go on set. In Atlanta, where it's such an advantage, I think, of having all these productions that are happening. They're always looking for students. So I say, surround yourself, go to art camps. I went to art camps. I went all over the country, you art know? Camps? Art camps? Oh, yes. I didn't know yes. about art camps. And even at SCAD, we have a, a we have, it's called a Rising Star program. So if you're a junior in high school going into your senior year, you can spend five weeks on campus get college credits and really get a glimpse of what it's like to be a college art student so wow. there are so many opportunities but I think people they just have to like say this is what I want to do or I want to learn more about architecture interior design fashion clothing design pattern making whatever it is 
there are so many careers in the arts now that I just, I didn't know when I was in college, so. so I'm glad you brought that up because when I think of the arts, typically I think of painting and sculpture. Fine arts. Right, I do think of fine arts, and I don't think in terms of production and drama and film and all those things that are inclu included under that umbrella. So for our teenagers out there, can you give us, you know, you, you have focused us on careers and creative careers. Can you tell us a little bit more about the umbrella of experiences in the arts? You know, it's, it's all design, right? And I, I talk to a lot of young people who are interested in the arts, and they say, well, I like fashion, but I like performing arts, and I like that, and I said, you can do it all, right? You can, wow. get your, you can get your hands into everything. I see a lot of students who are maybe interested in fashion. I said, you can be a stylist. You can design one-of-a-kind pieces. You could work for a production company. You could work for Tory Burch or Sarah Blakely at Spanx and still do your own thing. I think even with the social media thing right now that we're seeing with Instagram, Young people are creating their own brands. You don't even have to wait till you get to school or graduate from school. Start your brand, create an identity. You know, you like certain colors, you like the beach, do beach wear, you know? And I just think, but you know, having aesthetic, understanding the principles of design and, and all that goes into it, like kind of like the architecture to make good decisions, color choices, design wise. I mean, it, it all interconnects. And that's a great thing right now with the arts world and with us all being at home, watching this show, you know, streaming everything. Sean, my husband and I were binge watching all these shows. You can create content mm -hmm. and people are looking. You don't even know who's looking at your stuff right now. See, see, I love your idea about creating content and you can establish that as early as what? Because you've got young children. Oh, right. Our, oh my goodness. Our, <laughs> our young ones, they're like, we want a YouTube channel. We have a video. They're, they have these editing software on their iPads. I'm like, what is this? They have little templates that they're creating their own videos their own adventures they're writing them I you know I, the other day I had to say you know you just wrote a screenplay like you literally just said you know line one this actor says this then they move here I said that's what a screenplay is that's what people do in movie sets and TV shows so you know they're kind of learning but I'm like the tools that they have now it's just unbelievable we didn't have that when I was growing oh, we up we certainly did not <laughs> we had our notebooks we had notebook and pen and paper eraser typewriters I mean so you know the world is our oyster young people they're our, our kids are even watching people play games on YouTube. You know what, I'm, what I hear you saying, and particularly during this COVID-19 time when we are all sheltered at home, this is such an opportunity, not only to guide your children, but to also access new information. Like you're giving me all kinds of ideas that actually I'm gonna be using with my patients. <laughs> yes. So it's, yes, yes. So it's important that you point these things out. Now for people who, don't have that kind of experience that you bring. For parents out there who don't have that kind of exposure, where do you tell them to start? You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend here. Her daughter is going to be enrolling in film at SCAD in the fall. Wow. And I remember when I first got my job at SCAD and she said, I'm a scientist. I don't understand what's going on. I said, you know what, just come to SCAD day. Or now I would tell people, go on a virtual tour. You can actually tour the building, hear what professors have to say about, you know, what kind of career is out there. Um, I'm learning stuff every day and I'm working at this campus. I'm learning about industrial design. I'm like, you know, wow. people are designing cars, people are designing interiors. A lot of things have been invented, but people want to take it to the next level. This has been such valuable information and so interesting. You won't want to miss a thing. So please join us in a few minutes. Welcome back. We're so happy to have you join us. As you know, we are speaking with Dr. Audra Price Pittman, and we're so happy to have her because she's teaching us so much today. So Audra, tell us, how do you yourself, you're an artist, you're vice president, but you're also an artist. How do you creatively express your work in your home and in your, I mean, in your home and just in your life? You know, it's funny, since I've come to SCAD, everything changes. Um, I look around our space and it's designed so like fun and surprising and engaging. And, and the minute I start working there, I'm like, Sean, I have to change everything. The rooms need to look different. We have to get different furniture. You know, I have to dress differently. Everything's just kind of changing, you know? And, but I also find moments through, through quiet things. A lot of times I still express my art when I'm making gifts for friends, right? And you, you think about, okay, how can I use my talent to do something maybe different that they couldn't get anywhere else? So if it's, you know, painting a glass or, you know, now I've gotten into this weird obsessive needlepoint thing. I wore my little needlepoint dress today. I didn't do this. I can't even take credit for this, but you know, 
I just think it's kind of going back to basics. You know, I think about knitting and, and crocheting and cross stitching. I just developed this love for this new contemporary needlepoint that's out there. So a lot of times I'll find little things that I can do. Um, before pre-kids, I think pre-big job, I would do large oil paintings. Like I've, I sent you some pictures of those. But and her, let me just mention, her oil paintings are absolutely exquisite. And so I, I encouraged Audra to bring some copies of it because I want you to see what's out there so many times. I know as a young child, I was never really exposed to art. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big part of my life that was missing. And so when, you, when young people see how good, you know, how good you are and even how good you can get, I think it makes such a difference in their development because that's what we want to talk about, just mm -hmm. developing this love for the arts, this love for culture, because clearly you got it. I, I just think it's like with anything, with sports, with you know, learning a new language, it's the amount of time that you invest in it, right? You can be, become an expert at anything, just as long as you're like trying to get new ideas, try new materials, try things, and things don't always work out. Believe me, I have a lot of like drawings and paintings in the closet somewhere that I don't care for, or someone might see a painting and say, oh, I love it, it's finished. I'm like, it's not finished, <laughs> you know? You just, everyone has their own kind of level of what's finished and what they're willing to share, but I think the more you create, the more mistakes you make, the better it's gonna get, the easier it's gonna get to pick up a new material and try something else. You know, I like what you said though about going to, you know, again, we keep going back to COVID-19 because that's always on our minds. Mm -hmm. and, and we, of course, are involved in any kind of projects that's not gonna help with creativity, but it's gonna also help with anxiety. Oh, right. Now, have you noticed during this time, being at home with your children, is your anxiety higher or lower? You know, it's interesting. I think it's just shifted, right? And I, and I think what we've learned with our girls, they need, they need the routine and structure, right? They want things to be just like they were. You know, I, go, I wake up, I eat my breakfast, I get dressed, I go to school, I see my friends, I come home, and you know, they're kind of routine. And so when that was interrupted, that's when anxiety got a little high. And then we get frustrated because we're trying to still work, but we want to make sure they're educated and we're like, and then you know what, you just realize, you know, like, okay, it's gonna get done. At some point, it's going to get done. This is not an emergency, you know. They're, they're learning so much, but just because we didn't do the extra assignment, it's like, mm -hmm. then it can get done tomorrow, you know? And so it's, it's coaching our students. And, and when I'm at SCAD, you know, and telling them, there was a lot of anxiety when they were like, wait, we're going online? Mm -hmm. I was expecting to do ground and I can't and this and that. And I think once they got into it and once they got back into the routine, they're like, oh, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is great. I get to spend more time with mom and dad and see them and, you know, so I think the uncertainty causes anxiety and anxiousness. But if you just, hey, this is what we can handle today. Tomorrow's another day. We'll go through that day and, you know, tackle what we can and just realize, hey, it's what you can do. You know, that's a, that's an important point because there's so much that we can do while we're at home, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we don't have those kinds of distractions. But I do think for college students and for parents, and, and we want to spend some time talking about that in our next mm -hmm. segment, because what does it mean returning back to school after this? I don't think any, at least as far as I can determine, any university at this point is saying, we're going to come back to college full force. They're mm -hmm. all talking about doing it you know, progressively. Right. And um, you know, when we're looking at, at some of the universities, at least here in the Southeast, they're saying, you know, as far as they're concerned, they're going to be all online classes at least until January. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're going to talk about that and so much more when we return. All right, we're so happy that you joined us again and, and I want you to continue with this conversation because now we're going to talk about teens and college students either going back to college or going to college for the first time and you know given what's going on in this country I think it's important for parents to have an understanding of first how the universities are going to approach this and then to help them make them their decisions as to whether or not they say teens let's you know it's it's August we want you to go back or let's hold back mm -hmm. and take a gap you know gap semester well, so right. what's your thoughts on that Audra? So it's, it's, it's interesting um, I think decisions are being made but they change every other day mm -hmm. you know we um, we actually announced to our students that we were going to come back in the fall for wow. a ground session. What's a little unique about SCAD is that we're on the quarter system, so it's only 10 weeks. We're not on the semester system, and we start about mid-September, so we have a little more room than school well, starting in August, way. right? And as soon as we made that announcement, the whole California State University system said, we're off, we're off online for the whole rest of the year. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, what does this mean? So, 
you know, our, our first concern is student safety. You know, right. I, I think a lot of young people think, oh, I'll never get it. I'm young. I'm vibrant. It's this. But it, it's not always just about you. And it's about the community you're in and, and everything like that. But, you know, we have our staff, our faculty. We want to keep everyone safe and healthy. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're constantly monitoring the situation. I think being a school that's in Georgia and we have a location in Lacoste, France, we're always. France. Yeah. Oh, yes. You got to come. You gotta come. <laughs> South France. <laughs> um, but, you know, we just want to make sure that, you know, we don't want to put students in a situation where they're compromised or people who are sick. Um, you know, when we made this transition from to spring quarter online, we have international students in Atlanta campus. We have about 30% international who could wow. not go home. Mm -hmm. So we had about 90 students who stayed behind in the dorms. We had suite styles, but we said, hey, just one or two per suite. That's it. We're mm -hmm. not going to do, you know, the traditional. And they're still there. They're still there. Um, a lot of them are going back home. Um, we are going to have 20 students this summer, but we said we're going to consolidate, send them to Savannah. So we're looking at different ways of is this building open? Maybe it's a part-time, maybe it's a hybrid. You know, we have committees for that just to figure out what does it look like? Do we have half the population stay at home? Do we have half, half the population come into the building? Um, you know, in Atlanta, it's very dense and, and we hear other corporations saying they have one-way hallways. And, you know, so again, we're always going to make sure the safety is the biggest concern, tracking the numbers. Um, but in this online environment, you know, I've had accepted student celebrations, if you can imagine, like in these Zoom rooms, breakout rooms, and they're getting to know one another maybe more in a way they would never have done before. So, uh -huh. you know, I think that we're still going to create ways for them to build relationships, build networks with their peers. But again, safety is first concern. OK, so here's the bottom yes. line question. Yeah. The bottom line question is I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter who has been accepted into SCAD. Mm -hmm. August rolls, no, September yeah. rolls around. What do I do at this point? Do I call you or do I oh, wait? We, oh, no, we are getting information. It's funny. I did have a parent text me today, said, OK, what's <laughs> happening? I said, you can bother me all you want. I can imagine. This is scary. It's right. It's it is very scary. And but, you know, communication is the key in any time like this. So we're over communicating. We have Facebook group pages for parents. We have Instagram. We have letters going out to students, prospective students, admitted students, you know, everyone. We're always kind of keeping them in mind. In and the saying, loop. Right. Yeah, here's what's going. Here's our plan for now. Stay you know, we'll keep you updated or we've pushed deadlines on deposits. You know what? Housing may not be a thing. So we're going to push that deadline up a little bit. And so, again, we're always kind of flexible and fluid and just figuring out, hey, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But we know you have to move. You're probably moving from California. You're moving right. from another country. We want to make sure everyone has enough time to plan and execute and get that out and that they feel comfortable in their decisions. So as far as safety is concerned as a parent mm -hmm. or a grandparent in my case, I would feel comfortable in saying, you know what, we're going to go ahead, we're going to move forward with this, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel sure that whatever measures. Now, what about testing? Because, you know, parents are going to say, if you think your child is at risk, is your school going to be capable of doing the testing that's necessary? Right. And so, again, it's through our, our, our director of university safety operations. They kind mm -hmm. of, they have their own group of, you know, how do we do provide masks, sanitation. Right. I remember when this even was first starting, I mean, we had sanitizers going up everywhere. You know, we had extra janitors walking around the elevators and spraying before everything actually shut down. So right. we were thinking about measures and we just respond accordingly. Right. But. Again, if it's going to be something where we can't even test everyone, then we're not going to put them in that situation. Okay, so. absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, th I think this is such important information for our audience because we've got so many kids graduating this 2020. Mm -hmm. And this has been quite the summer and oh, quite yes. the celebrations. And like, like Audrey, you were saying, th everything is done so virtually. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we were thinking is that a lot of schools were going to do their introductions virtually as opposed to you know, hands on. But what you're right. saying is that SCAD may do it a little bit differently. We always kind of do things a little <laughs> bit differently. Uh, we're having our virtual commencement at the end of May, and I'm really excited. I'm, I'm thinking about the, you know, the special surprise guest speaker coming in, but even seeing the format of students are able to create a, like a yearbook page and their friends wow. and family can kind of leave comments, leave photos and see their graduation. We're giving more access before they're getting five tickets to graduation. Now the whole family can come <laughs> from across the world. So you know, that's a great point yeah. because, I, you know, I think when we look at, at the times and when we look at what we're going through, I think we're having to be creative on so many levels. And I like what you're hearing. Of, I'm, I, I'm rather, I like what you're saying mm -hmm. about SCAD and about universities across the country. I think probably each university is doing it a little bit differently. Totally. But for those who are interested in arts and culture, this sounds like this is the place you want to land. Oh, it is. We're sending surprise care packages to students. They're going to experience it on graduation day. So 
we always like to do a little above and beyond, but uh, it should be fun. Above and beyond. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, this information has been just extraordinary, and I think our audience is going to find it very compelling, very enlightening, and very illuminating. I think SCAD may have not have been on your list as a possible university, but after our conversation <laughs> today, you're going to be considering it. But we're going to be right back with our final thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are just thrilled to have had Dr. Pittman be here with us today. As you can see, this is a very, very innovative, powerful, interesting, kind of seductive kind of conversation, don't you think? I mean, it's so good to hear about the arts. And, and I want to know your final thoughts and anything that you think that our audience would benefit from or learn from specifically about the world of arts and culture. I think as with arts and culture, it's create the opportunity. I think now more than ever, show people what you can do for them. Sell yourself. I know as artists, a lot of times we're we're you know introspective humble. and we're humble and we don't you know we don't we have a fear of being judged you know and just separate yourself from your work and say hey I have graphic design abilities I can sketch this I can paint this I can create something new for you or I see your business is trying to go online let me help you design your website a logo whatever it is create opportunities for yourself because I think now people are finding out there's jobs out there that didn't even know existed. Absolutely, and we learned about some today. Right, right, so again, create your own opportunities. Don't wait for them to come to you. Be vulnerable, tell people, hey, I'm looking to do this. Do you know anyone? Sometimes you're two degrees away from a major opportunity happening. Absolutely, well, I'll tell you one thing. We have learned a lot about arts and culture today. We've exposed you to some new information. We've talked to you about SCAD and the opportunities there. And I think for you out there and our audience that watches us every single week, you will certainly have gained a lot from today's conversation. So make sure you tune in every single week and join us from the heart. We'll see you next week.